Hi guys, it's Kelly Lettable here and I'm back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we are going to be doing some watercoloring with some white heat embossing. This card features the, well, a bunch of products, but um, mostly the um, Christmas bouquet, the Christmas rose bouquet on the left there. I also use a sentiments from holiday trimmings. And then I have a couple of um, dot panel sheet the watercolors to try and I'm using some glitter paper and just some regular uh, rectangle dies. So this stamp set um, is so large that I only actually had to stamp it twice to cover a whole card which is fantastic. Um, so I prepped my watercolor paper, I'm working on Canson um, watercolor paper and I prepped that with an anti-static tool. I'm going to stamp the uh, Christmas Rose bouquet down in Versamark ink and I'm using my Misty because well, it's twofold. The first one is um, because it is a large stamp, I want to make sure that I get good pressure. The second reason is because I'm stamping on watercolor paper and um, it can be hard to get a good impression because it's a, a textured surface. And then the third reason, I said there was only two, but I'm a liar. You should know that about me. Um, the third reason is so that I could just flip my cardstock and then I didn't even have to move my stamp. Um, so I did the same thing that I did before, and you saw me put on the white uh, embossing powder. I did that just as a placeholder to make sure it's very hard to see when it's just stamped in Versamark. So I wanted to make sure I could see where I had stamped previously so that they did not overlap. So I filled up the whole card panel, and then um, I'm putting on that Simon Says Stamp white embossing powder, and I'm going to heat set that. Um, this did take a minute because I'm basically heat embossing the entire card. Um, but I had really minimal warping, so it, just make sure your gun's good and hot before you start. These are those dot cards I was telling you about. Um, they're basically just like a tr kind of like a try before you buy. Watercolor tubes last forever, um, just forever. So they're a good investment period. But if you want to try them before you purchase a whole tube, so you know that it's a color that you'll like, um, these Daniel Smith does these little dot cards. These ones were specifically released um, for Sherry Carroll and Debbie Hughes preferences, but you can do whatever. So this is, I, I'm cheating at watercoloring, people. That's what I'm doing here. Um, basically, I just put down clean, clear water, and because of the embossing, it creates little, um, what is the word that I want? Little, like, alcloves that will hold the water, and then you can just drop your pigment in, and it doesn't, spread outside of those little lines it keeps them contained so it makes it super easy to just drop you know you put down the clean clear water you drop in the pigment you move on to the next one um so this is like stress-free watercolor for me because when i try to watercolor just with a stamped image sometimes i get a little bit stressed out um, because I like having those boundaries of the black line, or in this case, the embossing. It's like my little safe space, makes me <laughs> makes me feel comfortable in the watercoloring. So um, I used, what did I use? I used Pearl Scarlet for the base of the um, poinsettia, and then I added a darker shade, which was the <laughs> Quidacridone Burnt Scarlet. So I added that just to, you'll start to see as it um, gets darker. Uh, I just added that to the base and then I just let the pigment, you know, do what it do because that's what makes watercolor pretty to me, um, is not trying to manipulate it too much, just dropping in that pigment and letting it flow. I find if you mess with it too much, you end up with kind of no variation. Um, and I really like the variation of watercolor. So the other part of this, um, what, why is a border? Whoa, Kelly. The other part of this border stamp set is actually hellebore flowers. They are um, referred to as the, the Christmas rose because they bloom at Christmas time. I didn't know anything about hellebore. So, um, in fact, when Dawn and I had the conversation about the new upcoming sets, she was telling me that um, she did this border stamp and um, I loved it. And she was like, yeah, they're hellebore. And I was like, girl, there's so many flowers out there, you don't need to make one up. I mean, I never even heard of that thing. What What is that? And you'll notice at this point, the coloring is speeding up, and that's because I wanted you to be able to see the whole thing, but not actually have to waste half of your life here with me. So I didn't even know this was a flower. 
Um, it is, it's a beautiful flower. And so I had to Google it to see what colors they came in. And there's so many variations. There's white, light pink, um, and then they have purple and what and black. Um, but the black is not black, which we typically, you know, as card makers, we know that black is never really black. There's varying tones and, um, you know, cool blacks versus warm. And so the, the black of the hellebore flower is more on the purple side. So I used the quadacridone violet. And then I also added the blue appetite genuine. Um, and it's a navy. And I did that to get the shading and they ended up not probably, I don't know, they probably wouldn't be considered the black version of the hellebore, probably more the purple, but nonetheless, I think it's super striking with the red of the poinsettia and I love the way that it came out. So I'm just going through and continually adding um, the pigment until I'm happy with how dark they are. As long as your um, flower is still wet, like the, the water is still wet, you can keep going back in and adding more shading, more pigment. Um, you can also add it after it's dry, but you won't be able to just drop it in like you can do when it's wet. Another thing to note is even though um, the, oh here, you'll see I got a little bit of green in my flower. This is no big. If this happens to you, don't freak out. Just get a little bit of paper towel and just dab up the area that you contaminated, I guess, and it'll um, pick up the pigment and nobody will know that you made a boo-boo. It's no big deal. That goes also as long as it's wet. But anyway, with the with traditional watercolor, you cannot paint two things that are next to each other because they will run into each other. With white heat, em with any heat embossing, it doesn't have to just be white. Um, with heat embossing, it does give you a little bit more grace uh, to paint two things that are next to each other but you should be aware that if there's too much water pooled in um, the embossed area, it can still run over. So you have to be careful and control the amount of water that you're putting down or wait for an area to dry back a little bit before you go in and try to paint something next to it. I really like uh, mixing up the greens that I use. So for the yellow greens, I used sap green and I shaded that with undersea green. Then for the bluish um, teal leaves, I use, um, what is this? Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. Isn't that a pretty name? Um, and I shaded that with Ultramarine Turquoise, which is a very strong teal color. It's very bright. I love it. I would probably buy that one. Um, that's just me. So. The, the, it's the same technique throughout the whole thing. I went ahead and painted the other side, just wanted you to see what that looked like there. And then I let it sit and dry naturally. I didn't help it dry at all because I was worried about getting some blooms. Once that was all dry, which I think I let it sit overnight to be honest, that isn't necessary. But I'm gonna start building up the frame of my card. So I have these uh, rectangle dies and I'm going to cut them into so I'm using the largest one to cut just white cardstock. Then I'm going in with the next smallest size and cutting this white glitter paper from Simon Says Stamp. Run those through my Big Shot. I wanted, I felt like the glitter was just a little bit too much glitter. So in order to kind of break that up, I am using a piece of vellum and I am cutting this to just slightly smaller than the white frame and slightly larger than the glitter paper. So it'll be like an in-between layer. I just basically stacked them on top of each other and then measured to see what the area would be uh, where I needed to cut. And then I just put it in my trimmer. I make sure that I don't press the blade down until I am in direct line with that, um, with, the, with the previous cut, wherever I wanted to cut from. And then you only obviously want to take it down as far as whatever your border is going to be. I think this one ended up being just a hair over a quarter, a hair over a quarter of an inch on each side. And then I'm just, it gets easier as you go. The, the first cut is the hardest cut because you don't really know what you're doing. So then, all right, go around all four sides. You'll see here after this last cut, 
Uh, most of the square or rectangle pops out, but I did have one little piece that hung on. Don't tear it because then you'll have weird corners. Just go in with your scissors and just snip the little corner and then you should be good to go. So now once those were done, I went ahead and, um, you know, removed my dies. Now I have two other squares that are cut and I can use for another card. I'm going to layer these up just to make sure everything is matching and looks like how I want it to look. Here I'm going to put that vellum piece in between again to make sure that enough of the glitter paper is showing. That same vellum I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment on. So this Love and Joy is from the Holiday Trimming Set. And this you definitely want to make sure you treat it with some sort of anti-static. So whether that would be um, a bag like I have, a powder tool, I think that's me, like EK Success, I think that one's pretty popular. Uh, even a dryer sheet, something, because vellum will absolutely just grab hold of any embossing powder that you put on it. It's so staticky. I'm going to stamp that in Versamark, put on my white um, embossing powder, and this one... I had my gun heated up before. I almost always do, but you definitely want to do that with vellum because there isn't a lot of substance to it and it will warp like that, like nobody's business. So I trimmed out my piece um, with my sentiment on it and now I'm going to start building the card. So I'm just putting adhesive around the outside border. Typically with vellum, you don't want to put adhesive behind it because it's clear. You're going to be able to see it. But with this, because the frame is going to be covered by the white piece, I just made sure that my glue was really on the outside edges and none of it was kind of sneaking through the area that would be seen. In order to adhere my sentiment, because like I just said, you know, we don't want to put any adhesive where you'll be able to see it, I'm actually going to sandwich it between the two frames. So I'm marking where I want that to go, putting glue down, and then just holding it there. I'm going to trim off the excess with my scissors and then I'm going to put glue around the outside edge of this piece. I was just using the flowers to make sure that it was in the right place. So I'm going to put the glue around the outside edge of this piece and then um, mount the white frame on top of that. So then that vellum sandwiched between the two, it will kind of sit over the card and I won't have to worry about any adhesive showing at all. With vellum, sometimes you got to get a little bit creative, but most of the time it ends up being pretty. So kind of worth the time it takes. I put some scotch foam adhesive on the back of the entire frame piece so that it would pop up over the floral port um, portion of it. I should tell you that I already adhered this to a white card base. My flowers have already been adhered to a white card base. So I laid that on top and again because I use the foam tape that sentiment's going to kind of float above the card. I wanted to add just a little bit of shimmer and a way to accent that sentiment, so I'm using some clear sequins to do that. Just a couple to the bottom right, a couple to the top left, and then that's the whole card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you guys will give this a try, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.